Welcome to part two of our Construction Roundtable series. Canadian Occupational Safety recently gathered experts from Canada's construction industry for a roundtable discussion. The experts talked about health and safety within the industry and how to achieve regulatory harmony across jurisdictions. Panelists included employers, labour associations and representatives from the Ontario Ministry of Labour and the Canadian Standards Association. The roundtable was presented in conjunction with our sponsor, Miller by Honeywell. In this video, the speakers tackled the issue of a national training standard in construction. The Dean report which was put in place in, um, uh, as a result of unfortunately that incident uh, where uh, uh, five men fell, four lost their lives, one is uh, still uh, injured uh, permanently. Uh, and unfortunately it took that to, to, to get us to this point. Um, but I'm a firm believer in, okay, we're here now, what are we going to do? We have that political will. And so we are working now with employers, those same, some of those same employers in labor, uh, to get those standards in place for entry level uh, training for construction. Um, and to pull the sector together. And as you can imagine, because of the diversity of the sector, some of those conversations can be challenging at times, um, but there's still conversations that we're having with the understanding that this is going to have regulatory teeth, uh, backing, and it's going to be mandated because um, it's time. You know. With regards to uh, not only the training, but those who provide the training. Right. And that's, that's another movement I think that is occurring um, not only across Ontario, but across the country, probably in regards to elevating the level of, of the trainer, yeah. making sure that, again, that quality, that um, whatever is put in place is actually going to be met um, at the front line to the workers, right? So we don't want to forget that the trainers are the ones who are transferring that information or trying to get that knowledge across the board. And if they're not uh, at a certain level, then again, you may have a, a house of cards, yep, to say, and, much. and we need to elevate that that level as well. Not only on the experience side, the expertise side, especially for those more um, critical training areas yeah. where people certainly need the expertise to to transfer that knowledge, um, will certainly help. I think in in moving the. Uh, the sticks or moving the chains. I believe it's something that the provinces have to be consistent with, though. That we can't have Newfoundland doing one thing, Alberta doing another thing, and Ontario, we're in the development <laughs> stages, so it's a matter of looking at what the rest of the provinces are doing mm -hmm. so that we have a consistency because we have a large amount of construction workers uh, uh, or of industry that travels from province to province to province and has to get recertified yes. and retrained in every single every single province they go. So we need some kind of a some kind of a group that gets together to be able to have a consistent amount of training. It's difficult enough in any province to uh, get the uh, uh, governing party to do something positive on prevention. And if they have a situation now where you have a national standard and you are still lobbied in your province, you want that province to move the yardstick, we can't because we're tied in with everybody else. To me, that would be a mistake. Uh, I'm the, the, the heaviest guy around when it comes to uh, prevention, and I don't want another barrier put in the place to help us with our uh, uh, mobility issues. Um, we put another barrier in place to stop us doing the right thing in one province or another. It doesn't matter to me what province comes up with the next real positive step in prevention. We don't need a, a national standard to adopt that. I would be pushing our provincial government in a big way if that piece was there that I could see that would help us with prevention. But if, if we've bought into this national standard thing, then the only way we can move is we all move together. And uh, to me, it becomes more of a barrier than it does uh, an assist. And some of, some of the things in terms of that um, perspective and with respect to helping that is you may not have to do national standard, but you can do equivalencies, right? So if you're looking at something where you have a particular standard in a province, this is what we're looking for. And you provide some flexibility for the employers to say, well, if you have something else that can demonstrate to us that you're needing this, then we can take a look at it. So there's, there's other ways to make sure that that consistency is there. Our biggest issue in our jurisdiction is um, exactly that standard. Um, what's happening now is is our regulatory body, our, our government agencies are, 
I don't really know the reasoning behind it, but there seems to be a reluctancy to set a standard and to be in care and control of that standard. Nobody wants to be the person to say, it's my standard, I'm going to be the one who looks after it. So what's happening in our area is the contractors are taking that amongst themselves. They're all setting their own little playing field, their own little sandbox, and they're saying, this is our standard, we're going to adhere to it. So we have our own little provincial guidelines, job site to job site. And, and the portability of, of workers is suffering because of that. And the contractors are suffering because of that. So I do agree with what you, what you said, that a national standard is definitely going to have some bumps in the road. Um, my biggest question is, if whatever model we go down, whether it's a national standard or a guideline that, that grows from province to province, somebody has to be willing to stand up and take ownership of that. And they have to have the clout behind it so that if the ticket that I receive has that individual's or that organization's name to it, is it recognized across industry? That's, that's one of our biggest uh, problems. I can develop a program in my organization, but is it actually accepted by other organizations, by other contractors? Does it mean anything?